Right, I think we're, we're on, so good morning and warm welcome. Special warm welcome to our visitors, our members of important organisations and community. It's lovely to have you here and of course our staff who support us. Now we've got apologies from Councillor Collins, Councillor Sayers, Councillor Newman for lateness and Councillor Newman we just want to acknowledge has been doing some very hard work in his um, community over the security guard who was killed, which is mm. quite tragic for that community. And Councillor Newman has been supporting his community with that. Councillor Fletcher, Walker and Member Brown. Any other apologies? No, I'll move those if someone would like to. Councillor Second. Cole will second. Mm -hmm. All those in favour please say aye. 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 Against, carried. Um, I just, Councillor, um, before we start, sorry, uh, sorry, you got mine for early, early departure, departure for a plan Councilor change. Cooper, Thank we'll you. make that on very serious we'll council business. Um, just before we start the official meeting, I'd like to just invite Councillor Mike Lee um, to acknowledge Pierre Chatelain, who passed away, and he gifted the Atu Creek Regional Park, um, which is you know, a, a remarkable thing to do and his contribution to our city has been extraordinary and Mike knew him well. So, Mike, do you want to just take a moment to <coughs> acknowledge Pierre? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I rise to acknowledge the passing of Pierre Chatelainar, uh, who uh, gifted his 843 hectare property, Archu Creek, uh, after a lifetime of building it into um, a superb cattle and sheep station. It's a coastal property and I believe on the Kaipara Harbour, one of our biggest coastal parks. I don't know what the value of that land would be nowadays, it would be enormous, but it was a, a magnificent gesture of generosity on behalf of Pierre and his wife Jackie to gift it to the people of New Zealand in trust to the ARC at the time, the Auckland Regional Council and now the Auckland Council. Uh, such generosity is singular and we have to admit rather unusual in this acquisitive age. So on behalf of all of us, uh, I salute the passing of Pierre Chatelainar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Lee. We appreciate that and it will be noted in the record. And as you say, the gifting of such a huge piece of land is outstanding and remarkable and virtually unique. So thank you, and thank you for your work with that too, Councillor Lee. I move on to declarations of interest. Um, Councillor Clo. Yeah, I just, uh, a declaration, a bit more interest in the Tofu pathway. It's noted, thank you. And if anything arises that strikes people that they need to let us know, please do during the meeting. Confirmation of minutes, 10th of April. Councillor Philip Iner, do you want to move that? Yep. Cool. And seconded. Councillor Simpson, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against mm. carried. Petitions, we have none. Now, two lots of public input today. We've got the Tafo Pathway Project and the College Rifles, Rugby Union Football Fano, who are in front of us here. So we might, um, we'll do Tafo first, if that's okay. I'd like to invite Tony McGill. Um, warm welcome, Tony. We've got Tim Livingston and Greg Presland, who are part of the Trust. Do you, Tim, do you want to join us as well? And Greg? Trust and Way of our part of the world. These are people we know well, with many hats. But today, they're here <laughs> for the Tifo pathway. Warm welcome, Tony. Okay. So we've got about five or so, but we'll moments, minutes for presentation, and then there'll be questions. Thank you. Thank you. Look, we're in, um, I'm Tony McGill. I'm the chairperson of the Five Coast Environmental Trust, and just here to give you an update on the project and talk to you about some of our issues going forward. Um, just firstly, I would like to thank Council for the support we've had to date. Um, and certainly it's been a, an outstanding process in terms of support from uh, your Parks Department, Auckland Transport, uh, the two local boards, and the um, 
and also the Manafenua for the area. So just by the way of introduction, if you're not familiar with the project, so this is a pathway that will link the Manukau with the Watamata Harbour. Uh, you can see it at the next there. So essentially starting at Green Bay, going all the way through um, to Te Aratu. Um, and uh, one interesting aspect of the project is that it actually provides a link, not only a link across the way, but across the Northwestern Cycle Way. Uh, and now there's uh, the cycle network along the, um, along here, along Avondale, and then the proposed network along the railway line. So it actually provides a probably <coughs> about 30 odd kilometres of walking and cycling. And it's quite interesting because with the closure of the, um, the paths in the Waitakere Ranges, uh, this will actually become a, a major destination for alternatives in, in the west. Uh, and you can join it anywhere, so you, you know, you might only want to do a short walk, or you might want to do commuting, uh, or you might want to do a complete loop. <coughs> so what's been happening so far? So our trust was established in 2015. Uh, since, raised, since then we've raised about $2 million. Um, but the total investment between council, the local boards, the growth funding, Auckland Transport and NCTA 7.9 million to date. Uh, but I, th I think it's fair to say, if it hadn't been for the trust, now this would happen. We have been the catalyst for the project. Uh, so what's been achieved so far is about 2.2 kilometres of pathway have been built um, at local parks. Uh, we've got a grant for to build a pond too in a Rachibo park at the moment, which is under construction. Uh, and that's one example of the multiple benefits that we can deliver. So. Uh, at the moment, the Wakama clubs uh, have to travel from West Auckland to Takapuna to do their training. Uh, this will enable them to actually do the training right on the river. Uh, as well, there's been an extensive planting program. It just needs very fast. So um, here's the proposed uh, sequencing. So essentially building in stages. So the idea is to try and complete stages so that we can provide uh, a joined up project. So the first stage is from uh, along Portage Road. So this is already uh, built cycle way. So a, a, a link between the end of uh, Portage Road and Green Bay. Uh, the next stage is really around here, uh, connecting New Lynn. Uh, and, and this year we've got a bridge going across Rylesville Reserve, which is there that's proposed. Um, and it illustrates one of our problems. So when we started off, this bridge was going to cost about 1.2 million. We're now looking at probably about 2 to 2.2 million in just a period of two years. Um, and then going on along the way. But one special feature is there's about six kilometers of the walkway which will actually go across the mangroves, and you'll get an experience of walking across water, which will be quite a unique experience. Obviously, one of the challenges is how do we build this with minimal environmental impact. So in terms of the objectives, well, obviously, the first objective is the walking and cycling objective, so connecting communities, but also as a cycle route. Uh, and as I mentioned previously, we'll link up with existing cycleways uh, the New, New Land Transport Interchange and the proposed Theatre to Transport Interchange. Uh, but we also have a number of objectives, and so that's one of the things we'd like to talk to you today. So up to now, we focus very much on really getting the funding to build the uh, physical better work, but we're now looking at delivering on the environmental and community objectives, and we really need to find a way of how we can work with council uh, in delivering these objectives. So. Uh, as well as the normal objectives we mentioned here, uh, we want to look at sh uh, sharing and celebrating the folk history and culture, uh, integrating it with arts and the design. Uh, we've published a book, uh, which I think some of you have got a copy. If you're interested, we can make the copy uh, available to you. So essentially, a book capturing the history of the folk catchment, which is fascinating, because it's a real insight into how the West has developed from the early brickworks in Avondale right through to New Lynn and what's become today. Uh, but these are the bits that are really of relevance to this committee. Um, firstly, we want to integrate stormwater management to the project. So uh, our objective uh, of giving people access to the Faux River uh, really has no meaning if the Faux is totally polluted as it is today. So 
we need to find ways of, of working to clean up the foe. Uh, but that actually requires an integrated approach. So you've got to clean up the land and clean up the water. Uh, obviously not a short-term task, but essentially there's no point in us making access to the river if people can't swim or fish in the river, as is the case today. Um, so we want to really work with you on the ecological enhancement, uh, how we can create recreational opportunities. So we started working with the school groups uh, on that approach. Uh, community engagement, we, we would love to see a community-led process uh, to prepare all the catchment management plans rather than the traditional approach, which is really uh, technical driven and the community just has to say yes or no. Uh, we would like to see an approach where the community actually <coughs> lead the project uh, and actually become part of the solution and at the same time providing educational opportunities. So here's a snapshot of, of some of the, the actual beneficiaries. So, so starting at the far end, you essentially got Green Bay, um, <coughs> Green Bay and Brockhouse Bay, right through to uh, New Lynn, Avondale, in Carlson, there's quite a lot of interest now as part of the redevelopment of Avondale of looking at how we can link uh, the town centre down to here. So essentially along Wingate Road, we think there's possibilities to work with Panuku to look at how that can be developed. Uh, and then going on through to uh, Glendine, Te Aratu, and so on. So within that area, there's about 98,000 odd residents who will actually directly benefit. Uh, it provides a link to three local parks. So our vision is this could become an ecological corridor. So essentially you've got the Watakri Ranges over here. Uh, you've got the Northwest Wild Link up the top, up the top there. And we think this could become an ecological corridor so that not only do we want to see a clean river, but we actually want to see a, a nice terrestrial environment which provides a corridor for birds, uh, which is free of rodents, free of pests. Uh, you see there's 23,000 schools with 7,000 students, so quite a big cluster in Kelston here, which is, so we started working with the Kelston principals to see how they participate in the project. Uh, the kicker is funding. Uh, so essentially, um, we, we've been told by funders that unless there's a substantial commitment from council, uh, no extra <laughs> funding will be provided. So what that means is what's been built to date will really not be not achieve much because they'll just be unconnected bits of pathway. Mm -hmm. So as it says at the moment, the budget prepared by MWH uh, was 64 odd million with 30% contingency. Unfortunately, the way things are going at the moment, this is likely to increase. So I see in the regional transport plan, there's 94 million allocated to the project, but it's unfunded. So there's really no certainty. Uh, without the council commitment, we won't be able to get any NCTA funding. So essentially, for a for a council investment of about 25 odd million, you would get 64 odd million dollars worth of assets. Uh, so we we think that's a pretty good proposition. So here are the benefits. So the modelling shows the cost benefit ratio is 2.4. Uh, there's the mon modelling shows that about 340 odd thousand people would walk and cycle along the South Point. There's travel time benefits. Uh, the main benefits are health benefits, 101 million. Safety benefits of 2.1, and operating costs of 6 million. But what we have built in here is the environmental benefits and also benefits of actually bringing communities together. So an example is Archibald Park. Archibald Park, uh, before the, the walkway was built, was a pretty underutilized park, and even a lot of lo lo local people did not exist. So with the cycleway, We've had a lot of feedback that people are actually using it. Uh, and we've built a loop, so you can actually do a loop. The same at McLeod Park. So people actually can go, you know, do a good, good bit of exercise, two or three kilometers, without having to go too far. So in a nutshell, uh, our request is that uh, to include the project in the LTP. Uh, we've made a submission along those lines. But essentially, uh, the $7.9 million investment, so out of that, Nearly, nearly five and a half million is, is council funding. So it's essentially, that investment will not achieve the intended objectives. Uh, this, the funding required of 25 odd million to complete the cycle way. Uh, we think it's doable. We've got the consenting process on the way, and we expect to be able to get the consent by the end of this year. 
So it, it's a project that's pretty well ready to go. It's not like other projects where there's you're required to buy land or you're required consents. It's a project, as soon as we get the consents, we've got the team, uh, we have the project management expertise, we can deliver the project. Uh, the, the trust requires operating costs, so we, our annual operating costs are about 70000 uh, to cover things like auditing, accounting, uh, audit, um, <coughs> accountability reports. Uh, we do a, a lot of community consultations, so we, we are seeking a grant towards our operating costs. Uh, we'd like this committee, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, to support our submission uh, to the 10-year to the budget for the funding. Uh, and we'd like to really explore with you how we can participate in the environmental management plan. So we've had a preliminary discussion with, with Barry uh, Potter, uh, but we would like to, to come back with, with an overall plan of saying, well, how would a community-led environmental management program look like for the foe? Uh, and you could then roll that out in other casements throughout the city. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I'd just like to again thank you all for your time and, and your support to date. So take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And I realise people have had a chance to hear about this through the LTP submission, but I think it's very useful to have a chance to focus on the environmental and community aspects of this. So we've probably got time for a couple of questions, if they're there. Councillor Philip Baina. Uh, thank you, Chair. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask around um, your total investment of 7.9 million. Is that 7.9 million made up of cash or made up of in kind plus the 2.2 million dollars that you had? Yes, I think it's all cash. It's all cash. It's 7.9. Yes. And then on your sorry, just a supplementary through you, Chair. Um, so that 7.9 at the moment um, and. Your budget, you ended up looking at five million dollars. Is your contribution towards it? Uh, through the that's going forward. So for the whole, so in addition to what's been funded to date, we, we think we could raise another five million, maybe seven million. But essentially, funders have told us that unless we can get a commitment from council, we won't get any uh, any more funding. Yes. And that five million, if you get any, you know, more money. Sorry, Chen, this is my last question. I promise. <coughs> when you, if, if you do get the the extra say five million or whatever million you get, does that come off the Auckland Council contribution? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So all, all the money goes to the project and the project becomes the council asset. Cool, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Mm, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Simpson. Uh, just a comment, if I may, Madam Chair. I, s I would like you to, um, if you have time, come and have a look in the Oireki ward of a walkway project through the mangroves, um, so how, th how they've done that, keeping the mangroves, and also the art that's gone into the mangroves to support that and the environmental project they're doing around filtration of um, mangroves and planting around that uh, as well. So it's a bit of an environmental project, a walkway and art all in the one place, and uh, just off the Oireki train station, hang a right and have a look. Great, thanks very much. Councillor Casey and then Councillor Cashmore. Oh, just a comment. Um, well, loads of people have been to Oraki to experience the boardwalk. The, the Four River and its walkways and segments are still largely unexplored by the, by the nation and even by the locals. And I speak as one who does use the Four River and take pictures of birds. And I'm glad you mentioned birds because the wildlife on the Four River is extraordinary. So just, just keep going, you know, keep going. Keep. Thank you, Councillor Casey. Councillor Cashmore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Gentlemen, the 25 million you want over the 10 years this current LTP we're going into, is that going to be spread evenly through each year, 2.5 per year? Um, I, I don't think so. I think it'll be lumpy. Uh, it will depend on the stages for, e for each stage. So, for example, the first stage down Portage Road of Memory is about one, one and a half. Uh, the, the biggest stage will be the bit uh, across the, uh, the water, which is about six kilometres. Uh, then probably will be built over two years. That's probably about 30 million. So it will be lumpy, but I think I think once we, we look at the funding, we can look at how that can be optimised. And your other partners who are wanting council as a cornerstone funder, are they some of the uh, charitable trusts and so forth? Yeah, so we've been to the charitable trust. We've also been to a number of the other non-for-profit funders, uh, and they're essentially saying, well, we want to see a comprehensive plan. We want to see how the funding is going to plan out. Uh, we, we have made a, a previous application to the Lotteries Commission as well, uh, but we essentially get the same message that unless, 
even, even with the environmental plan, we had a message that this council is willing to be a partner, and the environmental plan, we won't be able to fund it, so. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. I'll move that we um, thank our team who've presented. Is there a seconder for that, Councillor Cooper? I'll put that, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 It's carried. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Now, welcome our next um, group, and we've got our College Rifles Rugby Union Football and Sports Club partnership discussion. And Keith, if I can welcome you forward and bring your team with you, and if you would like to introduce who you've got with you, and the next five or so minutes are yours for presentation and then questions. Warm welcome. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko Arei Te Uru Taku Waka, ko Naitahu Taku Iwi, ko Mangarahu Taku Maunga, ko Wairua Taku Awa, ko Maungarei Taku Kainga, ko Ratcliffe Taku Whanau, ko Jenny Taku Baia, ko Chari Taku Mātua, ko Ki Taku Ingoa, nō re rā, Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. I'm joined by our um, past and present club presidents, um, Kevin Wright and Peter Kempson, um, Anna Stanley, who is a board member and ex-college rifles uh, netball player and Silver Ferns captain, um, Brett Young, uh, Auckland um, Rugby Union, the facilities manager, and um, I'm joined by Chris Tautianga, who's um, an ex-rifles player and our director of rugby. Um, we're a multi-sports club founded in 1897. We're the only rugby club in New Zealand with a military background, and we host an Anzac parade and service every year, attended by up to 1,000 people. Um, we have a membership across all sports of 6,650, and we are targeted to grow that at 30% over the next 10 years. Um, our players come across from across all Auckland regions, so 24% are from Ōraki, but we also have 36% of our players from South Auckland, 29% uh, centrally, 7% um, east, and 4% north. Uh, there are 12 sports operated at College Rifles. We are very proud of the values that we strive to uphold. We're respectful of tradition, innovative, inclusive, a safe environment, and sustainable. In 2008, College Rifles entered into partnership with Auckland Council with a $750,000 grant. College Rifles provided two artificial turf fields to community usage and members. That grant was for 10 years amortised at $75,000 per, $75, per year. We're confident that College Rifles has met all the council objectives. Uh, we've maintained the fields to a high standard so that they've lasted the 10 years at no cost to council and the fields have ma been made available to the wider Auckland community right throughout that time. We're seeking a renewal of that partnership. College Rifles is requesting $750,000 from Council, and in return, College Rifles undertakes to replace both artificial turf fields to World Rugby standards um, at a cost of $1.855 million. We will encourage ongoing community access uh, will ensure that there are no ongoing maintenance costs to council, and those operating costs currently are calculated to be 85,000 per annum. And we will publicly acknowledge council support with signage at the entrance and around the fields. In terms of ground usage, Auckland council officers estimate that we have usage of over 70 hours per week, one and a half times other grounds, and we're never closed due to weather conditions. 40% of all rugby in the Oraki ward is played at College Rifles, and there are over 15,000 participants playing multiple codes at College Rifles each year. Um, there is multi-sports usage. Basically, we accommodate any turf-based sport you can imagine in New Zealand. Uh, and both fields ha allow full match and night activity. Community use of the grounds includes other sports clubs, such as Ellerslie Football Club, uh, community groups, including Auckland Council itself, had a team building day there last year. Um, also public services, services such as New Zealand Fire Service, Police and Defence Force, and schools from throughout the region. 
And with school roles increasing and field space decreasing, we expect there to be more and more demand from schools in the future. There is also considerable casual usage. If you come down any weekend, you'll see families kicking a ball around when there's no other organised competitions. But as well as maintaining those fields um, for all those users, uh, we all, they also use our toilets, our car parks, our changing sheds, and we maintain those at the expense of our membership. Um, and this is all fu funded by college rifles without any assistance. Mm. Um, we pride ourselves on being an inclusive and safe environment. We have good governance from our board of management. We encourage diversity of officials, players, supporters, and encourage participation across all ages, um, ethnicities, sexual orientation, and ability levels. Um, and in, then in terms of um, safety, the new shock pad and latest technology in turf manufacturing um, will increase the head impact rating by 60%. <coughs> which will greatly improve safety for players and also provide a more enjoyable experience. So finally, we look forward to your support and partnership in helping to continue to make these facilities available to the people of Auckland for an effective financial contribution. And the club would also like to take this opportunity uh, to acknowledge and express our appreciation for the partnership with Auckland Council to date. <coughs> Right, first off the blocks, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so thank you very much for that presentation. Could you just confirm, please, what has been your contribution since 2008 financially? Um, so in other words, what, what extra have you put in for the original investment of 750? And what do you expect it to be in the next 10 years, should you be successful today? And then my last question is, how much rates do you pay? Right. Um, originally, College Rifles put $1.25 million into the field development. We've paid um, $850,000 in operating expenses since then, so that's $2.1 million. Um, in 2018, we expect to put $1.2 million in again into the capital development. Um, we expect over the next 10 years that we will pay operating costs of they'll increase 20% on what they have been to date, which is about one, just over 1 million. So in the next 10 years, we expect to put 2.25 million into um, the fields at College Rifles. Um, in terms of rates, um, Kevin, you've got that figure? Well, in past year, we've paid nearly $26,000 in, in rates. Uh, what the future holds is up to you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Ten years, 260 odd thousand minimum. In addition, because going back to the community use, we pay $20,000 a year in disposal of rubbish alone. Uh, and so whilst the popularity of the field uh, is very pleasing, you, you, under, you will understand that, that the cost to us, which we are bearing outside of the field use, is, is quite substantial. Thank you for what you do, that's fantastic, yeah. thank you. Thank you, good question Councillor Simpson. Councillor Watson. Oh, thanks. Um, um, obviously with 40% uh, of the rugby in the whole ward just playing at this one location, the, the grounds, um, one would imagine in, in the winter months are pretty much totally taken up with, 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 with college rifles rugby teams, is, is that correct? Within certain time parameters, yes. Uh, junior rugby runs from 4.30 through to 6 and senior rugby after that. But we still have schools coming down during the day and they are playing football, hockey. Um, we have lacrosse on Sundays. Um, we have special tournaments on Saturdays. So because we have that artificial turf, it, it really can take a, take a hammering. So we're able to have the rugby but we still have that space for all the other sports to um, to enjoy the use of the fields. And these other these other groups, they they pay to use the fields. No. So Meadowbank School just approached me um, last week. They want to come down every Tuesday afternoon throughout winter for their um, field-based sports. We don't charge them anything for that. Councillor Filipina. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just on the the original and artificial pitch that you had. And, and I know there were reports around um, uh, the, the, the injuries that the players were receiving. So in regards to the new artificial pitches, especially the rugby one, um, will there 
will they be Sorry. built, put in, um, that are s specified for rugby? Because I know the original one um, uh, wasn't, but I want to make sure that what gets put in there is, is actually the specifications are, are exactly the ones in. I, I note that, 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 that I've read some studies uh, around the artificial pitches in the UK, which which is obviously a very high standard. So I'm hoping that that's the case. Yeah, now look, that's really import important to us, and especially with issues around concussion and being in the media now. So we've been working with World Rugby and New Zealand Rugby. Um, the fields that we are putting in will have a shock pad, yep. which has a warranty for 25 years. Um, the turf is far more durable. It's about eight and a half more times durable than the initial turf. And in terms of metrics, the turf that we have now has a head impact rating of, of 1.0. That, that has to be tested every two years. Um, the new turf, I'm told, will go in at a head impact rating of 1.7 and will never go below 1.4. So it's pretty much the same as playing on, on grass. Good. Yeah. Thank so that, you. that is important. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. It's impressive. Councillor Casey. Oh, College Rifles has got a long and proud history starting back in 1897 with the volunteers. So it has, um, it has that tradition. But what really pleased me in this and in what I heard this morning is the words inclusiveness, diversity and women. And I'd like you to spend the next two minutes telling me about women in your club, especially the new competition for girls that you started in 2016. The women's rugby started in 1996. So, yeah, 25 years anyway. Yeah. Uh, since then, we've been very <coughs> successful in women's rugby. We've always been fortunate enough to have Can strong women's sides. Uh, we've been heavily represented at New Zealand level, and I think this has helped recruit the younger girls along. That's continued right through. We continue to grow in it. Uh, at senior level, if I can call it that, but more importantly, uh, through Keith's work, we're introducing under 16 uh, tournaments, both 15s and 7s, um, and we, we really regard women's rugby as probably one of the gross in our club, as it is in New Zealand rugby. Our contribution um, to women's rugby is important. Only last week I'm, I'm a member of the Old Boys Association and uh, we fund a lot of the teams and we've made rather a large contribution to women's rugby to help them along with their gear, etc. So it is important to us. We're favoured this year to be, have Anna Stanley on board uh, as part of our management board, as part of the inclusiveness that we believe in and as you know is highly respected in netball circles and uh, and has a lot to offer us, we see, uh, in, in, in keeping with, with uh, our inclusiveness amongst female. Uh, you notice in the notes that we also promote other type uh, sports. One of the uh, um, contributing teams is, is, in fact, the Falcons rugby. We play a lot, we play a lot with in, in the, amongst the gay community. So, yeah, I think the word inclusive in, uh, is pretty, pretty descriptive, yeah. Thank you. Thank Fantastic, you. what a great answer. And I bumped into Dion from the Falcons yesterday, yeah. who's nursing a very sore knee, but hugely appreciative mm. of the inclusiveness that rugby is now extending to the LGBTI community. And long may that last, and good on you. I've got Member Blair and Councillor Fletcher, and then I think we will need to move on to our next item. Thank you, Member Blair. Uh, I just, I'm still playing rugby, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> so I was interested in the head injuries, which my wife says uh, continues uh, on a daily basis. Um, but um, so it was the shock value in terms of the collisions that you have on the ground. Um, but so my, my our uh, councillor Philippine has already asked that question. Mine's around what do you consider um, the three success factors of your your, your club? Is it history, governance, or I'd like you to? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Because um, I'd like it to continue whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 
I, I think if you go to our mission statement, it, it talks about um, community and providing the, the best back. possible sporting experience. So I think community is a, a really big part of it and, um, and what our community contributes to that. So I think that's a, a big success. Um, definitely the history, we're really proud of that, being around for, <coughs> for over 120 years and as po much as possible we try to link to that history with matches with the Defence Forces and also with the um, ANZAC Parade and Service that we put on, that council actually supports us with, so we do appreciate that. Um, those would be two of the big ones. And, and in the fields themselves, ha they have been really important to us. Actually having that capacity now to, to open them up for over 70 hours a week um, means that we're not limiting any user groups. So we've actually been able to start an athletics program. We've got over 200, sorry, 185 um, five to ten year olds doing athletics on our fields um, over summer. So they're, they're actually a really big part of it. That was a big step for us ten years ago to go to these artificial fields. Okay. Kia ora. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Final question, Councillor Fletcher. Well, thank you. Actually, uh, the previous question uh, was the one, it was about resilience, but, but may I say I have conflict here um, because my five year old grandson is playing. <laughs> <laughs> so, however, um, I, I want to first of all say that um, the Legacy Auckland City Council's policy of partnerships has clearly worked really well for you. I mean, by getting that capex off the ground, the fact that the operational costs are being met by the club, you know, that's, that's been a, a biggie. Um, how strong, just following on from the, the <coughs> question around resilience, but how strong is your volunteer community? Because that's always such a critical part to clubs. Yeah, it, it, look, it's, it's huge. And, and you see the volunteers who come down on a Saturday who um, manage the, the traffic, traffic flows, who event management. Um, that's, that's just the surface. You've got parents who are coaching, you know, mums and dads coaching, managing teams. Um, we estimated we have over 450 volunteers currently. So we couldn't operate without them. <coughs> They're a really important part of it, and um, yeah, and and you haven't detected any fall off um, in in ab attracting those volunteers. No, we're we're really fortunate. They just keep coming through. So we're planning a a, a big fundraising event in November, and we've got a really good group of mums who've come on board and taken um, control of that. And as they move on at the end of under thirteens, there's always some other wonderful person who comes in at the other end and and picks up the baton, so no, we're, we're really fortunate there. Thank you. I think, I think what it does attract these people, at the risk of bragging, uh, we have good governance, they see good organisation uh, via Keith and his team and by the Board of Management, and uh, I think we all like to be part of a success story, and consequently these people are happy to come along and put their hand up and help us continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good note to draw this to a close. Councillor Simpson would like to move. Councillor Fletcher, would you like to happy to second? second. The um, vote of thanks, I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. Carried. And thank you very much. That was a very fulsome report. And in return, we will gift you our um, template for the new logo <laughs> for the <laughs> council, <laughs> which will allow you to have the correct logo on there. Right. <laughs> thank you. Warmest thank you, and um, we'll, you know, we'll get to the item maybe in about an hour's time. You're welcome to stay, but if you don't stay, we won't be offended, and we'll tell you how it goes. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it.